Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to take a little bit of a break from real estate and I'm gonna make pizza. So the last video I did about going to the store and grilling some steaks seemed to be a little bit popular. People were asking for more cooking videos and since I'm Italian and food is my life, <clears throat> I decided I would show you how I make pizza. And this is, I'm getting ready to make a whole bunch for closing gifts because if you buy a home from me, you get pizza dinner <laughs> from me as a closing gift. Um, this is Detroit pizza recipe. So um, my mom actually found it on the Food Network and she told me about it and I made it and I bring it to a lot of parties when I go. It's very easy to make, very easy to make ahead in store. And um, like I said, it's a couple ingredients and I put it in the food processor and it's done. You also could purchase pizza dough from somewhere like Publix or any supermarket. Actually, my favorite way <clears throat> to make pizza is to put it on the grill, and that's another episode. Um, so first off, I'm gonna get this water warmed up. Uh, let's get started. I will put the recipe in the notes below. Like I said, it is seriously very simple. Um, it's flour, salt, sugar, yeast, and water. So what we start out with, and, and I actually, I'm organized like a TV show. So I have, I'm gonna show you, I have all-purpose flour. Now you could use double zero flour, you can use bread flour if you'd like. Just put your preference. I always use um, all-purpose flour. <laughs> Then, so that's two and a quarter cups. Now, what you need to know also about when you're working with flour and making doughs, sometimes they can be watery, sometimes it can be a little too tough. So you kind of have to get a feel for, is it, you know, do you need to add more flour or more water? And I'll show you, hopefully it'll come out right the first time. I'm sorry, this water's running, I gotta get it. Um, to warm. All right, so it's two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. I have two teaspoons of salt. Now I use <clears throat> pink Himalayan salt. Kind of stuck there. So I use Himalayan salt. I have a teaspoon of sugar, and it's just regular Domino sugar. And this is a little over a teaspoon of dry yeast and a cup of water. And it's warm water, I'm not measuring, I'm not temping it, it's just a cup of water. Um, you also sometimes, and I'll tell you this after I mix this, I take, first take and just give it a little stir. Now I wanna tell you something. Uh, this food processor I have is literally like 37 years old. So um, just pour the water in slowly, and the processor does all the work. There's no kneading, no futzing, and it'll come together, I'm lucky, in a ball. Now just looking at this, I can tell it's a little wet. So I'm gonna stop it here, and I'm gonna grab my some extra flour here, and just put a little bit, doesn't need a lot. It comes together. Sorry, I'm actually recording on my phone too. So this still is not coming together enough. Figures. I've already made like seven doughs. <laughs> They're fine. All right. So we're gonna let that knead up a little bit. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> a little bit of flour on the counter just so we can get it out. And let me, I'm gonna move this out of the way. So you can see here, hopefully, yeah, we got it. Never, I've filmed once with two cameras before. All right, so I'm just gonna take it and get it out. It's a little sticky still. So just use a little bit of extra flour. Can't really hurt it. You put too much, it'll get really hard. You don't want that. So clean it off of here. 
and really it's, it's done. You know, it's nice and warm and moist. There you have it. Look at that, pizza maker. You can see that. It was that simple. Now I'm gonna take and put it into, I have stainless steel pan here. I've got like hundreds of these. I, when I left my restaurant, I took everything with me. Not everything, I don't know what I was thinking, like I was gonna open up a restaurant, but just lightly oil the bowl. I'm gonna take, put the pizza dough in there like that. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take and put this in my oven. The oven is off, but I wanna make sure that um, it stays in a warm place for it to rise. It should rise about two hours. And I'll show you, camera tell. This here, this has been in the oven for about an hour. So it needs some more time. And if you don't think it has enough time, I'm not the neatest cook in the world. <laughs> I'm used to the restaurant where I would have somebody cleaning up after me, <clears throat> which I miss. But um, I just want to give you, let me clean this up a little bit. You know, they and on. Uh, I'm just going to use a bench scraper to kind of get all the big bits off of my counter. And I want to talk to you a little bit about cooking while we get this done. And um, olive oil and balsamic vinegar. Now, if you. If you're looking for an awesome salad dressing, get rid of all that garbage that you bought at the supermarket. I'm telling you, all those bottled dressings are like sugar, sugar, sugar. The best thing I can tell you is to make an investment. And what I mean by that, I mean, actually, this olive oil was pretty cheap. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna do it over here. All right, so this was $6.99 over at Mazzaro's, which is in St. Pete. And if you have a chance to take a short ride, well, it's about an hour and a half, but uh, it's a great Italian market. But olive oil and olives are like wine. So everything affects the taste, the flavor, the texture of olive oil, just like wine. So the terroir, the, uh, the growing region, the temperature, how long it's cool for at night, how hot it gets during the day really affects the olive and the olive taste. And of course, what's in the soil native to that region. So Spanish olive oil is gonna taste a little different than Italian, than California. But um, what I look for, I like unfiltered. Um, I just think it has a little bit more vibrant flavor and you want it. So it's green, um, extra virgin olive oil, first press. That means when they take the olive oil, they put it in a press, and they, that's the first olive oil, the virgin, the extra virgin, that comes out. Then it's virgin, and then it's pumice. That, you don't even want to cook at that. But um, just go and taste it. Now, there's a shop up in um, Lake Sumter Landing where you can taste olive oil, and, and you kind of want to suck it back like you would wine. So this, this one is light, has a little bit of pepper in the finish, and it, it will really transform your salad. So what you need is just a little bit of olive oil, and then really good olive oil. Let's see, I don't know if that one, there you go. Really good olive oil, and like I said, you can get that up at the shop in Sumter Landing, and I did a video on that a couple years ago, but this is the jewel. So we'll put it here, see how that goes. This here is, um, come on, straight. this is bals aged balsamic vinegar. Now this wasn't all that expensive. I think this was like 30 bucks. Um, this is from the Malpiki family. Each family in Italy, they rotate the barrels of their balsamic vinegar different. Now, I took a trip to Italy um, in 2006, and we actually visited the home where they make this, olive, this uh, balsamic vinegar, and they have it aging in the attic. 
and like the house is a fortress. Like there's millions of dollars worth of olive oil or vinegar in there and they guard it with bars. But anyway, so this here, I'm gonna, let's see here. It's on the thicker side and it's very sweet. So all you need is a little bit. Mmm. So good. You put this on oranges, on strawberries. But if you just take a little bit of this, put it on your salad with some really good olive oil, salt and pepper, it's pretty much all you need. You want to put some oregano, a little bit of fresh basil, chiffonade, some chop up some fresh basil. That will be awesome. But also, um, you can go and get glazes. Now they have dark balsamic glaze and something like this, which is a white balsamic glaze. So you can get white balsamic vinegar as well, which is, let's see, is that gonna brighten up there? Yeah, so. Um, actually, balsamic vinegar is made with a white grape, but because they cook it, it caramelizes and that's what makes it dark. So this glaze is thick. Like I said, you can get it in dark and white. This is gonna be, well here, let's, uh, let's do this. You can see how thick it is. And then, oh my God, you just take a little bit of that and dip some bread in it, some cheese and wine. This stuff here though, oh my gosh. When, when I saw this, <laughs> at, so I got this at Mazzaro's too out in St. Pete. Uh, <laughs> I was like jumping in the store. You would have thought I won the lottery. <laughs> I'm a very simple person when it comes to food. Well, no, I'm not very simple, but I love my food. But good vinegar, good olive oil will transform any salad that you have. Trust me on that. And if you try it, I want you to tell me about it. Let me know what you think. All right, so next up, we're going to get the pizza doughs out of the oven and get them ready to bake with some sauce and mozzarella cheese. Move that out of the way. All right, so I'm going to show you the dough is ready. It's risen about a little over one and a half times its size. Um, to get everything prepared for this, I by just regular shredded cheese. I get it at the supermarket. It works best for this recipe. I've tried it with fresh mozzarella and I don't particularly like the way it comes out and I'm gonna show you because um, when you take the cheese, you put it all around the corners so it bakes into the side of the crust alongside of the pan. It's fantastic. Okay, um, for sauce, you can make your own sauce but a lot of times, Seriously, I'll buy, you see that? I'll just buy some jar pizza sauce. Um, I always add cheese. So I use Locatelli cheese. Any, this is, let's see, it's got a good. So this is Locatelli cheese. So there's two types of cheese. There's Parmesan, well, there's a lot of different types of cheese, but this is, Locatelli is pecorino. Peco means sheep. Sheep's cheese is sharper than Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese is cow's milk cheese, but it's a little bit more mellow. Um, so for this, I kind of like this because I like the saltiness that the, um, the Locatelli actually offers dishes. I use this a lot. Um, and then I'll use, um, I'll just show you, I take dry basil and dry oregano, but when I put them on the pizza, I just, gently rub it between my hands so it kind of breaks it up and any little essential oils that they have there will be released. So let's start. First off, um, now there are Detroit pizza pans and um, if they have them on Amazon, I'll drop the link also in the description box. But today, these are heavy. I'm using cast iron. I bought these several years ago. These I use, um, I use a lot if I'm going to make a cobbler. Uh, so anyway, I really like them. I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom and rub it on the bottom. If you can 
Let's get this in here so you can see this. I'm rubbing the sides. Just to coat the sur lightly coat the surface because if you get too much olive oil, it's going to float, and um, you're going to have a hard time getting the pizza dough to um, to stay flush in the pan. All right, so I'm going to take the dough, scrape it out of the pan. It has a little bit of a crust on the top from the warmth of the oven. <coughs> but I'm not gonna manipulate it too much because you know, when you play with uh, dough, any type of bread dough, it will really get tough if you play with it too much. So what I like to do is take this, I've got the oven heating at 500 degrees. So this is, see how easy that was? I'm gonna show you one more. I'm gonna leave this on the side. I usually like to let it rest for about a half an hour, 45 minutes. before I put it back in the oven. So hopefully, part over again. Right. So here I'm just gonna take the dough. So that's it. All right, this part I'm gonna use the voiceover from before because I didn't turn the well, phone on. So that's it. Finished pizza dough. Well, not finished pizza dough, but just um, in the pan, ready to go. All right. So let's just say this is a time lapse. Now my oven is going to take a little bit to heat up because I just um, put it uh, on to 500. So I'm going to take some sauce. Now I don't take a lot. Just enough, Just enough to spread it. To spread it. Here, let's, uh, let's move it over here yeah. so you can see. see. Just take enough Just so take I can enough. spread it, cover it. I go all the way to the edge with the sauce. Now, now. I'm using a little spoon. <laughs> Could have picked a smaller spoon, huh? Um, I had these in my restaurant. I called them diet spoons because it was such a little spoon. Anyhow, all right. So spread the sauce all the way to the edge. And then I'm going to take a little bit of basil. Sit here. I'm going to do it over here. All right. So some fresh basil and I don't know, maybe about half a teaspoon. Just like that, and I just mash it, and I just so mash it in my hand so it makes it a little finer, and then sprinkle it, and the same with a little bit of oregano. The other oregano has good flavor. I, I, sometimes I even like to put the oregano on top of the cheese, which I'll probably do for this. All right. Let's just move this over. I want to finish this last one. All right. Last but not least, this is in my own container. I call this fairy dust. Mm -hmm. I talk about that in that steak video. I'm just going to sprinkle this over the top. This is garlic powder, onion powder, and pepper. Equal portions. I put it in a container. I use it on everything. I use it on my salad. I use it on steaks, burgers, chicken. Um, I put it on everything. It gives everything such a nice little extra flavor. All right. Then we're going to take such a nice this back over here. This is a challenge. Right. It's weird Everything because with the phone charging, I have, I'm not seeing what it's videoing because I have the better camera pointed back. So I don't know. Hopefully it's all lined up. Okay, there you go. That's the Locatelli cheese. And then I'm going to take a couple big handfuls of mozzarella cheese. Now you see how I'm taking it and putting it all along the edge. Just to make sure that it bakes into the sides. It's going to get down in the center there. That's it. And uh, Now if you want to put pepperoni or anything on it, you know, you can do that. It works. 
Um, because I put the pecorino, I won't put any additional salt on this. So there you have it. There is your Detroit pizza ready for the oven. All right, let's spin in about five minutes. This needs to stay in about 35 minutes so it starts to rise. Just so you know what you're looking for, if you can see the edges are puffing up and you can see they're getting a little dark on the side from the cheese baking in there. Oh, it's gonna be so good. All right, I thought I would show you um, some salad. So I think we'll have some tonight. Um, <clears throat> you could buy heads of lettuce. I like romaine. But I'll buy the bags of salad. Uh, my family, that's, that was our business. My family's business was grew lettuce and onions. It's not like, you know, we had some in the backyard. We had a couple hundred acres. Um, let me get my knife. So growing up, we grew lettuce and onions. Um, if you're interested in a little bit of history here, and I'm going to show you, I like to chop up my lettuce for salad. I don't like it in big chunks. So we, um, lettuce is very labor intensive. Obviously everything is very labor intensive, but um, very much predicated on weather. Um, around the time I had my daughter, my family, they grew onions too. Um, but with the onions, they would sell them in 50 pound bags to what they call a repacker. So that's, um, we packed them into 50 pound bags and then we sold it to somebody who packed it into the little packs that you get in the supermarket. Around the time that I had my daughter though, my father and my uncle, they decided to get into repacking. So they bought all the repacking machines. I mean, it was a huge operation. We had, um, like I said, we had about 300 acres and I can remember being little and with the rain, when the rain was coming, they had to get the onions into the barn, riding in a dump truck, in an army dump truck with my mother all day long, because I couldn't drive at the time. But my cousin could, and the whole family had to get these onions out of the field into the barn so they could cure. But anyway, I digress. Uh, well, that's a little bit of history about me. So um, anyway, so uh, Uyghur lettuce romaine, Boston escarole, um, Boston romaine, escarole chicory, uh, red leaf, green leaf not as, um, iceberg. And iceberg really has flavor. But so really, I'm a big iceberg fan. I'm a big Boston lettuce fan for my sandwiches. Um, red and green leaf have awesome flavor. So anyway, when I'm going to make salad, I'll just take the lettuce, just hit it again with, I don't know if you can, I'm really having a hard time telling if you can see this here, but this is just extra, uh, extra virgin olive oil. Put a little over the top, hit it with the balsamic vinegar, and seriously, you don't need a lot. That's really a couple little, maybe a teaspoon. And then I'll hit it with my fairy dust. <laughs> and I always put cheese. If I have tomatoes, I'll put tomatoes in it. And... Um, not basil, but I'll put a little bit of oregano. Again, I smash it up. Mix it up. And that's, that's it. It's just the simplest, the simplest of foods that make um, wonderful dishes. I've been watching, if you have the opportunity, I think it's on CNN, Stanley Tucci tours. Um, I make sure my microphone's on. Italy, and I made the mistake of starting to watch that. I think I said that earlier, but I've been starving all day. Oh, anyway, here we go. Mm. I love having salad with dinner. And it's funny because Italians don't eat salad in the beginning of the meal. My grandmother, my mother's mother, always ate it at the end of the meal. She was from Naples. But, yeah, so there it is. Simple salad. Awesome flavor. Dig in.
Next, I'm going to take my phone over to look at the pizza as it's cooking. Ta-da! Here we are. Pizza is... Oops. Let's see here. It is finished. Look at that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just take it out of the pan. It comes out really easily. Get this out of the way. All right, so you see how the crust, the cheese kind of really baked in to the outside. I don't know where I'm looking here. How the cheese really baked in to the outside here. And now you can cut it a whole bunch of different ways. You can cut it into squares, you can cut it into triangles, however you want. Small squares if you want to make appetizer size. You can hear that crunch. It's steamy. You see that? There we go. All oh, that steamy goodness. Yeah. I don't know. It's really hot. All right. I'll take a bite just for everyone. I'm going to take a bite at the end. So I hope you enjoyed this pizza making episode. All the information, the recipe, the pans I use will all be in the description box below. If you're interested in buying and selling a home here in the village of Florida, you know who to call, you get pizza dinner. All right, until next time, I'm Robin Cavallaro. If you like this video, stick around. I think you might like the next one. Mm. Oh, quick stop. I'm going to finish eating this and take care. I'll see you next time.